Hi there, welcome to another Engineering Mechanics video tutorial. In this video, I'll work through a three-dimensional rigid body equilibrium problem. So firstly, let's uh, look at the problem and try to understand uh, what's involved and what we need to find out. So we start off with uh, here our problem description and we also have a diagram uh, to help us understand the problem that we're looking at. So we start off, we have a bent rod. So here's our bent rod shown here. And it's important um, for you to be able to visualize things in three dimensions. Um, so the next thing uh, that we look at in our information here is that we're told that we have the bent rod is supported at A, supported over here by a smooth journal bearing. So that'll give us some information about the forces and or moments that occur at this point. Secondly, we're told that at uh, point D, we have ball and socket joint. So down here, uh, we're told that we have a ball and socket joint. So again, that will give us some information about the forces and or moments occurring at that connection. We're also told that it's supported at B by means of a cable BC. So we have our cable here supporting that part of the rod. And in this problem, we're asked to determine the components of the reaction forces acting at the supports A and D. So our supports A and D that we identified before, and the tension in the cable BC. Okay, uh, and as part of the question, we're told that we're needing to include uh, detailed procedure and free body diagrams to get full marks. So if this was a quiz question, um, but of course, you should be doing that anyway in any of your engineering mechanics problems. Good procedure and free body diagrams are essential. As with any engineering mechanics problem, there are usually many different ways to solve the problem. Uh, as you will note down here, this uh, example is actually taken from Hibbler Mechanics for Engineers, uh, the statics volume. If you look uh, into in that textbook, you'll see that this problem is solved in that example uh, using a vector approach. In this video, I'm going to use a very simple, straightforward uh, scalar approach, which you can um, follow. And you just apply your Newtonian mechanics and follow a simple step-by-step -step procedure, um, taking care to understand the where the forces and moments are applied and um, making sure that you obey Newton's laws, then you should be able to make your way to the solution and the correct answers without needing any particular um, insight um, or fancy methods to, to get to the answer. Okay, so let's start by drawing our free body diagram. Once we have the basic shape, and you should use drawing instruments to do your free body diagrams, um, so once we have our basic shape and some important points labelled, we can then start to add in our forces and or moments. So when adding the forces and moments to the free body diagram, I usually start with the known loads uh, and then work from there. So we have our weight load hanging down. And we can indicate uh, what the value of that is. So let's just go back and check our information. So we're told that we've got 100 kilo mass and our free body diagram has our force shown there as a W and we can calculate that because we know that the, the force due to gravity will be mass times uh, gravity which is 9.81 so we can fill that in 100 times 9.81 and of course we get 981 newtons. So now we need to start adding in our unknown forces and moments. So we'll start with our cable at B. Uh, we know that a cable is a two force member in equilibrium. So the force will be acting along the direction of the cable BC. So we can draw that in in our free body diagram. And of course we need to give our unknowns uh, a name or, or a variable uh, name. So we'll call that T subscript BC. Okay, so now we need to consider our reactions at our supports D and A. So let's start with the uh, ball and socket joint at D. Now, if you're not sure what 
uh, forces and or moments are supported by that type of constraint, you can go to the table in your uh, textbook. So in your textbook, you'll have a table that looks something like this. And uh, you'll be able to see that for a ball and socket joint, we've got three forces in each of the three component directions and no moment. Okay, so it's free to rotate about that point. Um, if you're not sure what that looks like in practice, um, at the physical ball and socket joint, here's an example of that. Okay, but for the purposes of drawing your free body diagram for your mechanics problem, um, your idealized representation. So here's your uh, idealization. And here is what we draw in our free body diagram to represent that connection. So back at our uh, free body diagram in our problem, we can now draw in our forces in the three x, y, z directions. And we can indicate those directions on our free body diagram for reference. And once we've done that, we can also put on our arrowheads for our forces. So at this stage, we'll just assume the sense of the force. And then once we've done that, we could, should, of course, then label all of our unknowns. So uh, for the reaction force in the x direction, I've called that R subscript dx. Um, in a lot of textbooks and other examples, you'll see people write just capital D subscript x. Uh, you can do that if you like, but I tend to prefer to use capital R or capital F for the force, and then D or whatever other point it is that we're talking about, and then the direction. So do the same thing for the other two forces. And now we need to consider our support at A, and we're told that that was a smooth journal bearing. So again, if you don't know what the reactions uh, should be for that, you can look at the table again. So uh, from this table, we can see for our journal bearing here, the shaft is prevented from moving in the horizontal and vertical directions. So therefore we have our force reactions. Um, there's no thrust reaction, so it's free to move in that longitudinal direction. So uh, on the coordinates we've got here, there's no FY um, reaction force. And also you can see here that it's showing that there is some restraint against uh, turning. So we've got a moment um, reaction, but take note of what it says in here. Uh, if the body is supported elsewhere, um, then we generally don't apply the, the moments as reactions. Okay, so on our free body diagram, then uh, we can start drawing in those forces. So for our journal bearing, uh, it's constrained from moving laterally in the y direction and in the z direction, but it's free to move in the x direction, so we have no force there. And as uh, we just discussed, we're not um, including the, any moment reaction. Again, we've just assumed a direction for the, the sense of the forces, and then we can put on our labels for those unknown reaction forces. Because this is a rigid body uh, mechanics problem and we're going to be dealing with moments, we'll need some distances. So let's put those on our free body diagram for reference. So in this problem, we have uh, on our free body diagram, we have six unknowns. So one, two, three, four, five, six. In rigid body equilibrium problems, generally we will start by using a moment equation. So look for somewhere to take moments about so that uh, many of our unknowns um, have a zero moment effect about that particular axis uh, so that they drop out of the equation. So in this particular problem, if we take the y axis, okay, um, all of these forces here, so our unknown TBC, our weight force, um, uh, the reaction forces at D all pass through um, the y-axis, so they have zero moment, and we can then leave RAZ as our unknown. 
So as I said, there's many different ways to solve these problems. Um, and I'm going to go through a fairly simplistic approach, um, which doesn't require too much insight. Um, if you're uh, clever and have, have done um, a fair bit of mechanics before and you're reasonably good at it, what you might realise is that if we take moments about an axis that passes through the points A to D, okay, take a moment about that axis, then we have our unknown TBC. So we just need to work out the perpendicular distance from B to the axis from A to D. And then we have our weight force um, and we just need to work out its perpendicular distance from the axis A to D. And that would enable us to, enable us to find TBC straight away. But um, let's continue on with my simplistic approach and we'll take some of the moments about the Y axis um, as our starting point. So I've written my equilibrium equation. So generally we need to indicate which direction we're taking as uh, positive, clockwise or anti-clockwise. In a 3D problem, that becomes a little bit tricky. Um, depends on which way you're looking down the axis. So I'm going to say anti-clockwise is positive or counterclockwise positive if you look down um, that axis at the positive um, directions of the other two coordinates. Okay, so if we have an anti-clockwise rotation right, around the y-axis here, uh, looking down that y-axis from the positive side, right, that's our positive moment. All right, so if we start looking at the forces that have a moment about the y-axis, um, as we discussed, all of these forces here all act through the y-axis, so they will have a zero moment. So we've got these two forces out here. Now RAZ acts perpendicularly at a distance from this y-axis, so that will have a moment effect. So we can write that in. RAZ times its perpendicular distance is one. And if we consider this force here, RAY, even though it's acting away from that y-axis, it's actually, uh, its line of action is parallel to the y-axis. So therefore, it will also have zero moment. So we can write our complete equation here. RAZ equal, times one equals zero. So of course, RAZ is equal to zero. All right, so let's use another moment equation and we take moments about the x-axis now. Uh, so that'll give us uh, our known weight force acting in that equation, plus our unknown tension in the cable, and also um, our reaction force RAZ, which we've also already worked out to be zero. So again, we'll take counterclockwise as positive. So we'll have RAZ, its perpendicular distance is one, and it's going clockwise about the x-axis, right? so it's negative. Um, yes, we know it's equal to z RAZ is equal to zero, but we'll just leave it in there for now. Uh, we have our force TBC acting perpendicularly to the y-axis at a distance of one. Again, that's going to rotate this thing uh, clockwise about the x-axis, so a negative moment. And we have the weight force acting down here at a distance of 0.5, and that's going anti-clockwise about the x-axis and all that's equal to zero, so we can solve for our unknown force TBC in the cable, and we get 981 times 0.5 for our weight force acting down. Here we've substituted um, RAZ equal to zero, so we get the tension in the cable is 490.5 newtons. Okay, so now we can start working out some of our uh, other reaction forces. So now if we take moments about the z-axis here, uh, the only force um, that would be causing a moment about the z-axis will be RAY. Okay? Uh, all of these forces pass through the z-axis. W, uh, TBC and RAZ are all parallel. So the only thing we need to worry about is RAY times 1. And of course, that gives us RAY equals zero. Okay, so let's continue on to find our other unknown reaction forces. And we'll just repeat over here on, on this page for reference 
the things that we've already calculated. Okay, so we've used three moment equations, so now we need to start using the force equilibrium equation. So let's start with some of the forces in the x direction. And of course, the only force that we've got acting in the x direction is RdX. So we can Im immediately write RdX equals zero. Okay, next we'll do some of the forces in the y direction equals zero. And we have RAY plus RDY equals zero. Okay, so RAY here and RDY are our only forces acting in the y direction. And we already found RAY equals zero up previous page. So that immediately gives us RDY equals zero. Okay, so now let's use some of the forces in the z direction equals zero. And we have RAZ, okay, our force up here. Uh, dz plus our cable tension and our weight all equal to zero. So the only unknown here is RDZ, so let's re, uh, rearrange that equation and solve for that. And we get RDZ is also equal to 490.5 newtons. So we've now found all of our reactions uh, and unknown forces, so we can just write in our final answers. So we had RAY equals RAZ equals not RB. So let me just fix that up. Okay, so RAY, RAZ, RDX and RDY all equal to zero. And our cable tension and the reaction force at, again, not B, that should be D. So let me again fix that up. Sorry about that. Okay, so tension in the cable and the reaction force at D in the Z direction is 491 newtons. So that's the end of the problem. Um, hope it's been helpful to you and please look at some of my other engineering mechanics videos if you need more assistance with solving engineering mechanics problems. Um, and just as I said at the start, this is not the most elegant way to solve this problem, um, but it does provide you a simple step-by-step way of working through it um, and not making assumptions that are wrong uh, and then getting the, uh, the problem completely wrong. All right, thanks for that and I'll catch you next time.